uh, late review here. Just reviewed Nightmare on Elm Street with my uh, friend and boss Mark, who is a major horror fan. In fact, this movie came out on your birthday. Well, in my birth year. My birth year. And it's top five favorite films of all time. The first one. The I, sequels are crap. I have never seen any of the uh, Nightmare on Elm Street movies. In fact, my only real actual Nightmare on Elm Street, let alone Jason experience, is Freddy vs. Jason, which is... I also love that movie. Um, if you watch anything that I make, there's always a reference to Freddy vs. Jason, because that movie is delightfully terrible. And I knew, I know Freddy through a lot of references, uh, a lot of kind of homages, both in, in jokes, in television shows, all sorts, and... I kind of really wish you both made a point about it during this movie when we were watching it that we didn't know because the thing that this movie does exceptionally well is not telling us who Freddy is. The first murder happens and we have no idea who he is other than the fact that he's a guy who's haunting these kids' dreams. No motive. You don't, I don't even get his name except in the girl's nursery rhyme Yeah. early on until... Way later. You don't hear Kruger until, like, well past halfway through the movie. Well, yeah, no, that was something that was quite interesting, is we didn't really find out who Kruger was until about three quarters of the way through the film. And I found this was, like, the slasher version, the horror TV slasher version of Alien. Because of how Kruger is shot, you really never see him in full light. You're always seeing him in the shadows. He doesn't say much. He has some comedic moments here and there, but in terms of what he became, he was much, he was really scary in this film. Well, that's funny because as a kid, I didn't know who Freddy Krueger was. The first time I watched this movie, I was four. Uh, I always say bad parenting aside, my parents pretty much let me watch whatever. I watched it when I was four years old. I called Freddy Krueger Freddy Nightmare. That was the only name I had for him until I was like 13. And people would talk about Krueger like my older friends, and I, I'd be like, no, no, it's a different guy. Like, I had no idea because. The name didn't mean much in that movie. You just know him as Freddy, and he was so scary. And yeah, he becomes kind of comedic later. But this first one, he's ju it's just a horror movie, and he's truly terrifying in it, and I love it. He doesn't say his classic bitch line, <laughs> which is what I was kind of hoping for, but I, I actually like that he didn't do that. Um, again, for a low... This was a low-budget horror film that you said that it's... What's it? The, that documentary you watched, it's uh, the... Never that, Sleep Again. They call it The House That Freddy Built. Um, New Line was going to go bankrupt, and uh, this movie saved it and, and led on to them being able to do movies like Lord, Lord of the, the Rings. Rings. It's just crazy when you think that a horror film pretty much saved the, co the production company or the production... Uh, that would make one of the best fantasy films of all time, which is really like that's like you wouldn't connect the two. Yeah, no. <laughs> if, you, <laughs> if you were to say that, if you told Wes Craven that was what was going to happen, he'd probably be like, no. He probably would have asked for more money. <laughs> <laughs> and this movie gives Johnny Depp. Yeah. Uh, who doesn't it. die as early as I thought he did. Yeah. Um, he's, uh, I guess he's the last kill. In the movie. Well, the mother, well, the, the mother, mother if the mother, the mother dies, <laughs> comes back, and then dies again. Dies, yeah, so like she gets sucked <laughs> vacuum like through the window. This is still a weird ending of the movie. I can't. I don't know. What, I don't know what to say about the end of the movie because it's so weird. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's the only thing I will say about this film is it's a solid film. It's got really good jump scares. The music is eighties. The whole. Oh, what was it? The crop tops? The crop top <laughs> yeah, shit? Like, guys not, wearing crop he, tops. He didn't know guys wore crop tops in the 80s. Everything is great about the movie until the ending, which <laughs> is only a bite-up product because you said that in the documentary that they didn't know how to end it. They talked about how they didn't really know how to end it. I think Bob Shea, the producer, the guy who runs New Line, came up with this ending. was like, oh yeah, do this thing. We'll do the car and the, the roof will close on it and we'll have... The mom died again, it'll all be a dream again, and you watch it, it's, what the fuck just happened? Well, yeah, because when they come out the door with her mother, I'm like, wait a minute, was it a dream the whole time? Like, the amount of inception, wrong, <laughs> when we were watching this, every time there was a dream thought, I just kept on saying, wrong. And they actually, it's funny, because they do, like, the 80s synth cue, and, like, some of them are very, like, bass note. <laughs> Early, Zimmer was watching uh, was watching this movie when he thought thought of the the Inception dream noise. Oh, but <laughs> it's funny because you say that, well this was the end of the trilogy. Like there was Halloween in the seventies, 
uh, Jason in the yeah, 80s. Friday came in 1980 or 81. And then this was, he, he, Freddy was the third. And even though it still was standing on the pillar of those two films, or sorry, it was standing in the shadow of those two, it still was able to bring something creative, the idea of hunting something in your dreams. The, the scariest part for me is the being something affecting your dreams, like the bed being the safe place. Every movie, like yeah. everything, when you're a kid, that's what you do. You run to your bed, you get under the covers. And uh, I love that the first kill happens, she pulls the blanket over top of her while she's yeah. thrashing. Oh, it's her safe yeah. space, and that's right where he gets her. And I'm like, that, that as a kid, that bothered, that tormented oh, me. I yeah. had nightmares for a decade because of Freddy Krueger, because of him attacking her dreams. Um, and I think it was Fox. Uh, don't quote me, I think it's one of the Fox execs told... Uh, Wes Craven that uh, no one would be scared of their dreams and so that's why Fox didn't pick up the movie I uh, assume he was the mentor or the same guy who cancelled Firefly and <laughs> Family Guy twice <laughs> well it's the thing that that first murder the first kill of the movie is terrifying because first you see her stomach get slashed and then she's against the wall and she's going all spider legs up against the ceiling I was like holy shit I did not expect that and that's the thing that this movie did is it surprised me oh, like constantly every time there was a few like cheesy jump scares but there was <laughs> even funny jump scares like when the tongue through the yeah. phone I'm your boyfriend now <laughs> that, that was funny there's actually some good comedical moments in this film the one the thing that I it, it's um, obviously it was low budget and obviously these actors weren't like seasoned because there are some really bland ass line <laughs> delivery, especially with what's oh god, who's the boyfriend of the girl? Who got, oh, um, Rick. Uh, uh, Todd. 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 Something. I think. Todd, I don't know. Yeah. Is it no? This was Todd, her boyfriend. I, I should. Know. I don't know. The, uh, it's a Mexican guy playing an Italian dude, though. He okay. actually changed his name in the credits. Oh my god. His uh, yeah, because they thought uh, Mexicans didn't get work. So uh, he changed his name to something Italian sounding to play that character. Well, like when he grabs her by the mouth and he like pulls her into the bush, it's like, I didn't kill her. The, the dialogue <laughs> is so blandly delivered and then the cock comes out, all right, bud, we've got you, come with us. You have to catch me, man. <laughs> Honestly, even Langen Camp, who like, she's horror royalty, so like, I feel like I shouldn't even say this, but... Some of her lines, like when she's talking to her, I know she's supposed to be tired and lethargic or whatever, but like, she's so deadpan when she's delivering them. <laughs> just like, but you buy it. It's independent. It's horror. It's it's whatever it was, and you just kind of go. Oh with yeah, it. for the I watch way shittier films now. Well, for the amount of <laughs> issues this film with the tight budget that they went through, and then basically the franchise they would create because uh, of it is monumental. Seven, I think seven real in-canon films, Freddy vs. Jason being kind of outer, and then the god-awful remake. There's a lot of effects in this film that are done practical, like the rubber wall, where he's coming through the rubber wall. <laughs> That's one of the, definitely oh, one of the scariest ones. I love ones. that moment. This movie's scary. It, it, it's still scary in some ways. Oh, when she's going up the stairs and she's sinking through the stairs, the I've, had, I've had that nightmare <laughs> before. That's awesome. And, yeah, no, there's a lot of relatable things. It's good horror, good practical effects. It's uh, It definitely is a classic 80s movie. And, I don't know, I, I think it's uh, it's a stood the test of time in some ways. Obviously, there's some of the visual, <laughs> some of the acting is a bit very dated. But, in terms of how it is, I feel that it's... It's uh, it's a classic for sure. I think it's the perfect example why practical is real because practical. I mean, it, yeah, it looks dated now, but I mean, in '84, that must have looked great. Like that must have been awesome. And like you look at all those practical effects, and then you go to 2010, which is all this newfangled technology, and they put CG for everything. Like you're talking about the scene where he comes through the wall. It's all CG, and it looks like. Uh, do you remember the Frighteners? Oh yeah. That, where he's like, that ghost is through the wall. Like that's what it looks like in the remake, and it's. Terrible. Like it looks bad for 2010. And I'm sure if we watch it in 2017, it'll look way worse. Well, and I'll make fun of it. Considering that it's it's all like they used elastic, a rubber, rubber. Yeah. Okay. Like, that's it. Like that's all they use, and it looks terrifying. 
I think it probably was a little weird for Robert Unglund to be like pushing up <laughs> pushing against like. Uh, it yeah. reminds me of when Ace Ventura was coming out of. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ace Ventura 2. Oh, oh it's one of the best scenes in that movie. I know everything in that movie, like the practical effects, um, and just like the stuff they did, like the rotating room, like he was talking about the the first murder where the girls dragged up the wall and around, like the room rotated, and they use it again when Johnny Depp's character gets it with the blood going everywhere. And like, it's just so cool. That, like, that's the way they did things. And even stuff like simple stuff, like building the bathroom set with the bathtub up high so that they could have someone underneath Heather landing camp so Freddie could put his hand up through and the claw comes between her legs. Just little things like that. Like, I just think it's, it, they put so much thought into it and they had, they used their money well and they did things. They didn't rely on what oh, low budget, yeah. you know. No. This film is pretty much like a solid film. The only thing that's a bit of a detractor is how it ends because <laughs> not even the guys who were making it knew how to end it. Yeah. So, I don't know, for my rate, well, I don't know if, if you want to rate this, in my silly rating system, it's out I, of seven, would, right? I would give it out of seven, yes. I would give it a six. Just yeah, because yeah, that I'll, ending. I, I'll little, say that's fair. <laughs> a little bit of the deadpan acting, um, but otherwise, no, everything else. I, I love this so movie. Much. I'm pretty sure I have it as a 10 on IMDb, um, but I mean, granted, I gave Dead Rising a 10 on IMDb because I'm in it. But. <laughs> Um, he's, I, he's the guy um, who Daddy ate, Zombie ate my yeah, daughter. He and his daughter. The, yeah, but very, a lot of fun. I love this movie. Uh, it's one of my top five films. But if the rest of my top five films are not great movies either, so I'm fine with a six because it is super flawed. Uh, I'll agree with you. I, six out of seven, I think, is fair. I just this movie is rating aside is just so much fun and phenomenal. And if you haven't seen it or you know someone who hasn't seen it, make them watch it. Oh yeah, no, I would definitely, yeah, I would suggest this. This is a horror film that, as I said, has stood some time. Like, some of the things are definitely interesting to see. It is a horror film from the 80s that is kind of an essential film. It's like the thing, in my opinion. I suggest yeah. the thing to everyone. And Nightmare Elm Street... You mean the one with Mary Elizabeth Wanstead, right? No. Well, anyways, Mark, thank you for being hey, on the review for no problem. this. Uh, Hopefully, we'll do the rest. We yeah, we'll do, set. yeah, we'll do this, and then we'll do, uh, we we'll should do Jason. Jason, uh, all of them. Oh, I think then, that'd be fun. And then and we end with Freddy vs. Well, Freddy vs. Jason. Anyways, guys, thank yeah. you for watching the review. Thank you. And hopefully we'll do uh, some more reviews in the future. The next one's the gay one. That probably won't make the cut. <laughs> <laughs> See you guys later. <laughs>